Okay, people. I'm gonna do this video simply on the strength of helping educate people because there is a lot of confusion when it comes to this industry and this information might help people and it's actually going to protect people help protect you because now you'll know when you're putting yourself in a potential risk of uh, getting arrested getting hurt and stuff like that so I currently live in Virginia and today well yesterday because now it's past midnight I went and I got contacted by a supposed security company uh, through Indeed. They saw my resume, they hit me up, sent me a message, I responded back. Um, I currently work for a company right now and they wanted to, I was looking to see if I could get some part-time work on the side, get some extra money. Because um, like many of us, one job I can't do what I want to do, so I need to make a little bit more money um anyway the point is I go and I meet with this guy I spoke with a lady over the phone I guess she's supposed to be like their HR coordinator or like their hiring manager I don't know who she was but she tells me you're gonna meet with so-and-so at so-and-so place I get there it's a bar or like a hookah lounge or something like that red flag number one not necessarily but possibly why would a licensed and bonded security company have me interview with one of their managers at a hookah lounge type area it's just unprofessional and it just looks shady red flag number two the guy that I'm interviewing with has a black t-shirt on with the words enforcement on the front. It doesn't say security, it doesn't have the name of the company like mine does. It doesn't have nothing, it just says enforcement. I'm gonna get to that in a minute as to why that's a red flag. Number three, I go inside and his he's I notice he's got two other guards in there, but they have t-shirts on like his, but their t-shirts don't say anything on it, no company no insignia and in the middle of the t-shirt it has a picture like a graphic t-shirt like an old navy type t-shirt where they put like a design ironed on but it's not really ironed on it's like painted on I guess you could say and it's a yellow colored badge like this but the badge has no markings on it or anything it just says I think it says enforcement at the top and then it has a five point star in the middle, but it's like dead center. Okay, so here's where it gets tricky. In this state, in order in the state, the Commonwealth of Virginia, the proper way to say it, you have to have one of three things in order to run a security company. Um, well, actually you have to have more than one of three things but I'm gonna get down to the basics this the, the code says the only way that you can hire a security contractor is if that company representative shows you that one they are a licensed and registered um, member of the Department of Criminal Justice Services meaning that they're registered with that and they've been certified by them they have to have at least a million dollar liability policy, liability policy for their company to cover their expenses should something happen. And then the third one is they have to have a certification and that certification to open up that company to understand the rules of security and how it runs is if you only have I guess the classes that you're supposed to take for for a business owner so for for someone to get into contracting for security in the state of Virginia the Commonwealth of Virginia the only way you could do it is if one you have a license for a private investigator as a private investigator Two, you're licensed as a personal protection specialist which is basically 
a bodyguard. It's just a fancy word for the bodyguard. So yeah, it's security, but it's different because these guys don't necessarily work a specific location. They roam the streets wherever their client needs to go. They're escorting, they're bodyguarding. Third one would be former military or law enforcement. So that kind of like waves the rights I mean, waives the requirements for the first two because he's law enforcement, so he's been trained in all aspects of security, plus law enforcement. And then once you have one of those three, law enforcement background, either a private investigator license or a private protection specialist, then you would apply for a Virginia, um, a Virginia security contractor license. You would open up a business and so forth and then you have to approve the insurance but then here's another thing and I found this out recently let's just say I run and own a 7-eleven and I want to hire you as a security company to be the guys to provide me security I have to pay a certain fee me the 7-eleven owner to get what's called a compliance registration which basically means that I have to make sure that I understand the rules and security with the people that I'm hiring so that way they understand that I know what they can and cannot do. It's weird, but it's just, been, it's just done that way. So how this pertains to this interview that I supposedly went to was because if you pay attention to what I said in the beginning, in Virginia, if you're working as a security guard or armed officer, whatever you want to call it, you have to wear a uniform unless you're an armored car truck, uh, armored truck driver. If you're an armored car, you know, delivery person where you pick up money and drop off money, your shirt does not have to say what mine says. It just has to say it on the front. But for people working in the capacity of private protections, which is bodyguarding or security work, you have to have a uniform shirt and it has to have at least the name of the company on one sleeve. And it cannot say anything with the word police. It has to say security. And the only way the word officer can be up there is if it is accompanied by the word security. That's literally written in the statute. So I get to this place and I see that the guy that's interviewing me, he has a black t-shirt on that just says enforcement. Ding, 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 ding. And then I get inside and I see two of his guys that work for him. They got on black t-shirts, but they just have a badge in the center with nothing in it. And it just has a five point star within the shield. So I'm like, okay, red flag number two. Get in there. The guy starts asking me if I have experience, blah, blah, blah. And then I mentioned to him, I said, hey, this is the kicker. Every licensed security company has to have the state regulation ID number on their website. I asked him, hey, well, I didn't ask him, you know, funny style like that. Came and I hit him with the, so I noticed you guys are on the web and I can't, I, I don't see your DCJS ID number on your website at all. And he's like, oh, well, we're licensed, we're licensed. I'm like, okay, so you're licensed and bonded? meaning you're licensed to operate as a security company and you have the insurance for it and he's like yeah 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 i'm like okay so then why is not on the website he's like i don't know I'm, I'm not pretty sure but i can get with hr and let them know maybe they could fix it or whatever i said oh okay that's fine i said okay um so what's the deal like well what are you guys he was like well you working i said yeah i work full time right now i'm trying to get part time and he said well what days are you working for i said well really it depends because I'd have to know what I'm getting into before I give you the days that I want to work because I'm going to go and then follow up with my boss and let him know, hey, can I get these two days off during the week so that way I can do part time with this person? He's like, OK, what are you looking for? I said, I'm looking for midday. I don't want to do overnight. I do overnight at my other job. So I'll do midday for you. And if push come to shove, if I got to skedaddle to my other job, I know that I'm not working overnight every day. And he was like, oh, okay. Tells me, well, the position pays 14 an hour. And right now, you know, we got a couple of these vape shops and these little gambling rooms. Basically, they're, they're like internet cafes is the word for them. 
Now, I worked at, a, at one of those before, and when I tell you it is a headache that I don't ever want to deal with again, I had to do what I had to do for the money, you know what I'm saying? And at the time, I was ignorant of the situation. I did not understand the full capacity of what comes with working for this type of shit. So, then he mentions to me that, he's like, well, we'll bring you on, and, you know, and... You'll be an employee of the company, but right now the client is paying us cash, and that's how we're paying, so direct deposit and all that won't be available right away. And I said, okay, so you're hiring me as a 1099, which is basically an independent contractor, meaning I work for myself. And if that's the case, then why would I work for you? I could just work for them directly. Why would I, you know what I'm saying? Like They could pay me straight. I don't got to take money from you. You get what I'm saying? That's the idea that I know of. And, um... He looked at me like I was crazy, but at the same time, he looked at me like, oh, shit, this motherfucker knows what he's talking about. So he goes and he says to me, well, yeah, we can get you a 1099. And I'm like, well, you can't do that. And he's like, what? Why not? I'm like, because in order for you to hire me as an independent contractor working to perform a service for you, I'd have to have my own security operating license. And I'd have to have a liability insurance of a million dollar policy. And I don't have neither one. He goes and he, I don't know, I don't think he understood what it meant, but he knew. He said, he says to me, oh no, you don't have to worry about that because we're going to bring you on as an employee. He tried to save himself. I said, well, if you're going to bring me on as an employee, how are you paying me cash? Where is gonna you, you got a W two? And he's like, Well, we could get you the W twos and everything. And I'm like, mm, No. I said, It's either one or the other. If you're gonna if you're gonna give me a W two, you can't pay me in cash. Like you gotta give me a check. You get what I'm saying? But see, here's the reason why that these fly by night companies go, you know, the way they go. Because the businesses that they're contracting with, right, under the table, so to speak, are not fully regulated. Like vape shops and shit like that, they're really not fully regulated. So they uh, they can't really file taxes for their stuff. And a lot of the times they don't want to report their taxes, especially if it's one of those, um, one of those um, internet cafe online gambling um businesses because the way that they get around the gambling laws in their state or their county or their city is that most gambling is is regulated as a game of chance whereas their games are labeled a game of skill so you know you see the slogan everyone's a winner if you know what you're doing you get to learn how to play it you can always win something so even if you if you put like $20 on there and you able to walk away with $2 you technically won so that's why it's not a game of chance it's not like you're hoping all three of them line up there's a there's an actual way you can try to line stuff up but it's a skill so that's how it gets that's how it gets around the gambling law but because it's not regulated there's no tax for it they they're not taxing that business you get what I'm saying and they're not reporting how much money they're pulling in every year because it's unregulated. It's complicated, but I get it. I know exactly what, what's going on. So they can't hire a true-to-spec security company unless they're actually doing their tax forms. And, you know, why? Because if they're hiring a security company, then as a business owner... That's an expense that I'm paying for. So I'm trying to file that and get some money back for that because I'm spending money to keep my business running. And a part of me keeping my business running is keeping my employees and my business safe. And that also gives me an incentive on my insurance for my business because now I have security on site 24 seven. So that brings my insurance premium and my deductibles lower. Yeah, it is a lot of, there's a lot of stuff that people don't know about this, this security game. So, Anyway, now that I've given you that, and if you have an issue understanding what I'm talking about, don't hesitate to rewind and go back and hear what I'm saying. 
Virginia has certain statutes for people who are trying to open up their own security company with the requirements that they have to fulfill before they can be considered a licensed security company. And then they also have requirements for people who are working as licensed armed and unarmed security personnel. So in order for you to work for a security company, you have to make the you have to meet the certain requirements. If you want to open your own security company, you have to meet the certain requirements. And if you want to hire a security company, you have to fill out the paperwork to be in compliance with those requirements because now you're the one who's buying the service, so you have to understand what you're getting into. It's just it's just the way the law works. So these guys are going all around that and they're hiring just average people, which I'm hoping in most cases they're hiring people who have experience in security, but they're probably not well versed with the law the way that I am. And the reason why I say that is because when I was talking to this guy, the guy, one of the guys that was standing there was looking at me and he puts his hands like this. Now at this point, I'm wondering, does this gesture mean who is this guy and is he really here for a job you know what if he's just undercover trying to you know what I'm saying because he sees that I'm mentioning these these codes and he's telling that the boss is telling me he could hire me for this and then he flips it and says he could do the w-2s but he's only paying me cash and I'm like you can't do that because it's one or the other you either gonna hire me as an employee and put me on payroll and give me a paycheck with taxes deducted or you're going to try to hire me as an independent contractor which in that case you can't do that because I don't have my own security business and I don't have a one million dollar liability policy so which one is it and he flip flopped between the two when I mentioned why he couldn't do which one either one and the guy that was standing there one of his guards goes like this so here's what I think what happened what happened was the guy that did this looked dead at his boss while I was talking, waiting to see what his response was. And at that moment, a light came on and that, and that brother's head was like, so basically what I'm trying to get across to you is what you're doing here is illegal and you know it. And these people probably don't know it and they're working for you. And if the state inspectors or the compliance agents for the state were to find out this is going on, everybody's getting arrested whether they knew it or not so you're putting our own people at risk of being arrested not to mention the possibility of you running off with their money and let's not forget if something happens to one of these guards that work for you you can automatically claim i don't they don't work for me because there's no paper trail so this is what this whole video is about you understand if something happens to you while on duty you get what I'm saying? Whether or not you have life insurance, the company, the, that's why they have to be licensed and bonded because now the liability and the responsibility falls on the employer because you got hurt or possibly killed on the job. Something has to be done. You get what I'm saying? Someone is responsible. There's, there's, there's someone responsible and liable for what happened. With these type of people that pay you cash under the table, you would wind up having to take them to court civilly, but you're going to battle because you're going to spend money that you don't have. And then there's a possibility that that person might just skip and never show up. So you got to understand the way the civil court system runs too. Just because the judge says, I order you to pay them $200,000 doesn't mean that he's going to have $200,000 to pay you. That just means you won the case. So whatever money he gets in legitimately will automatically be garnished and then given to you but he could wind up be paying that shit for like twenty dollars a month because of his income so don't put yourself in that position where all right i'm gonna get this money blah 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 because here's what you can do if you're working directly for the 7-eleven let's say then your shirt will say 7-eleven security and you will be the sole responsibility of 7-Eleven. Should anything happen, 7-Eleven is responsible. Of course, you're gonna be held responsible and liable if you do something illegal that you're not supposed to be doing, but the requirements are not necessary, are not, the, the requirements are not needed to be met when you're working for a private entity. Now, when you're working for a security business, there is a regulation on how security is supposed to operate as a business in the state. 
But if you're working for a hotel like Motel 6 or the Marriott, the Marriott does not have to abide by those rules. They don't have to make sure their people are state regulated and licensed, which in most cases when they do hire their in-house security, they make sure that someone has prior background in the security industry, which is regulated. They will ask you, do you have an active or have you ever had an active license to work security in the state? And if you do, you have a better chance of getting the job than somebody who doesn't because they know that you've been trained by state sanctioned you know instructors and you know the rules of level of force de-escalation crisis intervention all that blah 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 good stuff right whereas a guy who's never worked security and then some shit pops off he's going straight mighty joe young and beating a guy up you know what i mean like that's not what you want because that puts your whole business at risk because remember if they work for the marriott the marriott is responsible for anything that happens to that officer or anything that that officer does to someone so i call my boss and i tell my boss my boss says the same thing that I said. He said, what was his reaction when you started? I said, dude, he was looking all in the sky like this. And he kept looking behind him like as to see if anybody else could hear what we're talking about. So what I'm assuming is this. The company that he supposedly represents, they are a legitimate company, but they're taking cash for that contract and there's probably no actual written contract another thing is that how that security company is protecting themselves from any liability is by by making by making it a point to not let the people that supposedly work for them wear the name of that company on their shirt so mind you when i went in there he says he works for blah 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 security which is a real which is a real company but I don't know the license number cuz it's not on their website but his shirt doesn't say the name of the company which by law is supposed to and his people are not wearing a uniform by law uniform code the way it's supposed to be worn it just has a picture of this on a t-shirt but it doesn't even say security enforcement security guard none of that it just says enforcement with a five point star in the middle and it's a picture so that right there lets me know the guys that you're hiring they don't even know that they're in they're in they're in a really bad spot because if they get killed god forbid and may god bless them you're not responsible. You get what I'm saying? Until someone decides to take it to court or someone finds out how you had these people working and then something will happen. But there's no there's no compensation. There's no wrongful death suit. I mean, they could get a wrongful death lawsuit, but good luck getting that because the company is going to deny all knowledge and culpability, responsibility for your death. So again, work for a security company if you have to work for two legitimate companies just to make money don't get pulled into these type of schemes because these schemes happen all the time and you know the 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 worst case scenario is that you're shot and killed and your family's not compensated for your service and your sacrifice for you dying on the job and the the least the least worst scenario is that the people that you work for they run off with the money and then you never hear about them again okay like subscribe share whatever you want to do hit me up if you need answers some questions i could help you out i could even help you look up the statutes in your state and probably interpret them better for you